Welcome back to the wizard shop. Today we're going to chill in the shop. We're going to put this thing on the lift and actually look underneath and see how much further we really need to go. Let's get this thing on the lift. In the last video we looked at the wiring, some of the interior and the body and things of that nature, but all of my lifts were tied up. We were so busy. There was no way I could get it on a lift and together we could explore the underneath of this car. But today we have a lift open. We're going to get it up in the air. And some of the issues that we're going to find are going to be things that you can plan on finding on just about any W123 chassis. I've been through a number of these cars. I fixed this and this and this and that and I know all the common things. And I guarantee you we're going to find the same things when we look underneath. And those of you that own these cars or have also been through these cars are going to probably say, yep, I knew that would be bad or I knew that would be bad. So let's get it on the lift and find out what is bad. From looking at this car and checking this car over on top, I can tell that it's set outside for a number of years because it has leaves and things and also mice had been inside of here as we've seen. So it's obviously been outside. Another thing you have to watch out for for a car that sits is flat spots on the tires and also age on the tires. And as we get looking at this, you're going to see the tires are cracked really bad. These are not going to be tires you're going to drive on. They need to be replaced as part of getting this car back on the road. Let's take a look at this thing. So right now we're looking at the radiator and the oil cooler, which has got a tiny, tiny bit of seepage. These frequently have a small leak from them and usually I would let them go because any of you guys that have worked on these before know that anytime you take loose this nut, this flare nut here on the line or the top one, it always strips out the oil cooler. Unless you're prepared to replace the oil cooler, don't take those lines off. Check the AC compressor, and it's locked up tighter than a drum. It's going to need a new compressor, it's going to need the whole system flushed out, and probably a new orifice or expansion valve. Belts are all old. The fan's in good shape transmission cooler there's no leaks there the radiator is not leaking so that's good looks like somebody's already tried to fix the horn there some blue connectors here's our air conditioner receiver dryer I don't see anything on the front of the engine leaking really bad so that's good it's gonna need all new belts up in there you guys see some sludge and say, oh, this got an oil leak. Well, not an engine oil leak. That's diesel fuel that's leaked over the years from the primer pump. These things all leak from the primer pump if they haven't been serviced or repaired. It's very common, common leak. There's some sludge on the side of the engine. It very likely could be from the fuel leak as well. Another common issue, which I just looked just now and I've seen, and it is broken, is the corrugated flex pipe right here. I can fit my finger in this hole here. The corrugated tubing on the exhaust is broken. That could probably be welded or I'll probably just replace it. It unbolts down here and I can just replace the whole down pipe. I just hooked up a little fan, guys. You might hear it in the background. It's just so hot today and humid. I guarantee we're gonna find some stuff on the front end here. On any old 123, there's going to be things wrong, always. So let's take a look. Oh, i seen the ball joint moving there. Let's check that out. Oh, look at that. These require a special ball joint press tool because it fits inside of a cavity almost. I have the tool, but it's... You're not going to get that with your AutoZone ball joint press tool. It's not going to happen. These are the radius rods. Amazingly, they're in good, decent shape. And up here, you can see it has one single little control arm, and that ball joint's in good shape. The bottom one is the one that's clunking. And there's rubber bushings that go to a sway bar. 
And the, the control arm bushings are frequently bad. And on this one, they're actually decent. The shocks have an oil coating all the way down them. It's gonna need new shocks. That doesn't surprise me though on the front end. Let's look at the other side. Nothing loose there. Oh, look at there. Same thing there. That strut rod there, the radius rod is fine. The upper ball joint looks fine. The control arm looks fine. The brake wear sensor has been chewed. That's, that's the story of this car, it's chewed up. So we know we're going to need lower ball joints at least to make this thing quiet on the road. Let's move on back. The transmissions on these really don't give a lot of trouble that I can see from experience that the shifter rod bushing is gone and I can prove that by the noise I'm about to make. Oh guys, look back here. Look right here, guys. That's a very common 123 chassis problem. And these little bushings that go in there, is, that's the shifter rod between the shifter and the transmission. Very easy job. Let's look at the flex disc. It's all cracked up from age. Look at the transmission mount here. That's going to need to be replaced. It's going to rip and tear eventually. Thinking of the transmission mount, there's one thing we haven't checked. I mentioned to you guys that it has a shock absorber to absorb vibrations on these cars. And when it goes bad, it feels like it's missing, but it's not. That shock absorber is right here. And we can see the motor mount is pretty well crushed as well. So it's going to need the shock absorber and the motor mount on the driver's side. We need the motor mount on the passenger side and also the shock up front here on the passenger side. So on a 123 chassis, whenever you find one of those bad, you can pretty much guarantee they're all bad. Just do them all. You'll have a very smooth, quiet running engine. Comparatively, for a diesel that is, if you get all those replaced. Now we move just a foot back and there's another common, really it's a common Mercedes problem, not a 123. You can see the carrier support on the drive shaft. There's not much of anything left to it. That will make drive driveline vibrations or under hard acceleration, it can actually thunk, move around in there. The drive shaft's gonna have to come off. We we'll put a new bearing, new, new carrier support, and check this U-joint right here, which seems to be in okay shape. See if there's any tight spots. And now we move back to this flex disc. Hey, wait, car wizard. Hey, look at these floor pans. It actually looks solid. Yeah, that is. It's amazing. I think it's because it hasn't been driven. It's not been in wet conditions or it has nice solid floor pans. That's very nice. Very good. The exhaust is there, except for in the back. I can see some issues. We'll look at that when we get back there. But this flex disc will also need to be replaced. It's all cracked and dry rotted. Luckily, the pinion seal on the differential is not leaking. Neither is the axle seals on the differential. There's a buildup going on here. It looks like it's coming from the vent tube actually up top. Maybe it's over full or... I don't see that as being a huge problem though. We just need to drain the fluid and put the correct amount in, some fresh fluid. This is the differential mount. Those can also cause issues. This one's aged. It's probably good for a while. I wouldn't replace it right away. Up front, it mounts solid to this subframe, but up back here is a nice rubber mount. But you can get clunking and moving around back here if this is bad. This one, it's a little bit dry rotted, but it's not horrible. I would probably leave that one alone for a little while. These need some new boots, just on that side. This side's fine, but they're, you can tell they're dry rotted and cracked. Maybe some new CV shafts. Ah, oh, look at their rear shocks. They're coated in a layer of dirt and grease. They are shot. While we're here, let's check the sway bar link. We've talked about sway bar links before. 
Yep, you don't want to hear that in a nice Mercedes going down the road. You need sway bar links. The brake pads, I'm not even going to check the condition. is With the age of this vehicle, it's going to get all new brake pads all the way around for safety. We don't need to run on seven or ten year old brake pads that have been sitting in a field somewhere or in a, on the side street. Brake hoses. They got a lot of dry rot in them. That is not good. We're getting new brake hoses. And this brake hose, not good. That brake hose is shot. So is that shock. It's also coated in grunge. Let's check this sway bar link. Yep, that one's bad too. And like I said on the brakes, we're going to put new pads anyway and probably resurface the rotors. So here we can see this fuel line is cracked pretty bad. Eventually it'll start leaking fuel. That's the tank up there. That'll need to be replaced. This muffler is bad. That's going to need to be replaced. I can put my finger through it. There's a little bit of rust here, but it's not real bad. <clears throat> That's something I'll probably just leave it alone. We could put some black paint and cover it and keep it from going any further. Uh, I don't do body work here, so that's not gonna be fixed here. That'll have to be, if the, if the owner wants it fixed, they'll have to take it to a body shop. We can see that these mounts of all their little donuts, their rubber donuts is all they are. They're all missing and broken and gone. It's being held up by baling wire. And I can tell it came from a farm. And the fact it's got baling wire, that'll have to be addressed. Right here, the donuts are missing completely. I'll get new ones of that. Again, a little bit of rust there, but not too bad. And the bumper's missing, but it's in the back seat. Let's check the tires, and then we're done under here. Oof. Bad, bad, bad cracked. Very, very bad. As we see over here on this one, the tread is actually starting to separate. And what that'll do under high highway speeds is the centrifugal force will actually pull the steel belt away, and then this will just fly off and blow your tire out. That's very dangerous. With all those things that we found loose underneath the car, if you were to try to take this on the road or on the highway and drive it, the amount of clunking all over the car would drive you batty. It would drive you nuts. Constantly and clunk, 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 clunk. It would be, it would be crazy. Definitely we need to get all those things addressed. So with all the wiring issues we found in the engine bay, and who knows once we start to drive it, whatever, what other things we'll find. Drive line, suspension, a few leaks. As we add all these things up, as you can see, it's not going to be 300 bucks to fix this car. Every time I found something wrong, it's one or two or $500 every time. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. It adds up fast. A lot of you in the comment section make comments, well, the part only costs 50 bucks, but a common thing that most people forget when they come to the shop is you have to pay me to replace it. I hear that a lot. Oh, I forgot. I forgot the labor. Sorry. I completely forgot that I have to actually pay you to do the job. I was just thinking about the part. Every time we found a broken piece on here, there's two parts of the story. The cost of the part and the labor. So I told you in a previous video on this car, three to four grand is probably what it's going to take to fix this. It very likely is going to hit that mark, maybe a little bit more. Think about all the parts that you had to replace and all the labor front to back. That's how it gets there really fast. It's not easy to just unbolt the part and bolt the other one on. Let me show you what I mean. As I mentioned in the previous video, instead of piecemeal, little piece here, little piece there on the wiring issues that we saw, we're just going to pull the whole harness because there's been mice all up and down through this whole car chewing wires. And I actually have a complete W123 front to back wiring harness. There's tons and tons and tons of wiring. It, it completely hides my body behind it. It's like a big squid. That's another item that I'm not going to pay my guys to, to replace this whole mess and charge you a hundred bucks. Not happening. You have to pull the whole harness out 
and then start feeding this one through the firewall or through the dash or different places. Where did this wire go? And one thing I do, like I've said in previous videos, is take a picture before you take it apart. Then you can see, okay, the red wires went here, the green wires went there. And you can also use a shop manual, but they don't really show very well of pulling the whole harness out wholesale and replacing the whole thing. And usually the, the shop manuals are in black and white. They're not colored. They do say colors, but they don't show the colors. As you can see here, here's the fuse box. As you can see here, here's the fuse box. Here's some bulkhead connectors. This goes through the firewall with this little seal. Connectors, 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 tons of wires. Relays. There's a bunch of grounds. This is a huge job, very big job. This is not a half an hour. This is like 10 hours. So is this thing roadworthy in its current condition? Absolutely not. But can it be made that way? Yes, for a price. Is it worth three or four grand to get this thing back on the road? Financially, probably not. But in this situation, just like we mentioned in the video, the first video on this car, this was grandpa's car. And the amount of money that the customer is going to spend getting this back on the road is about what he would spend on a Toyota Camry or something else for his daughter. So really, it's not that bad. And it's going to be a really cool car to drive around. There's a lot of parts that are bad that we found bad on this car that may be actually hard to find. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel as far as that's concerned. I actually have a guy in Texas who offered to deliver to me another complete 123. It's in really rough shape as far as the body and all the cosmetics. But all the parts are there and it runs and drives. So I'll be able to pull parts off of that car. As long as they're in good shape, I'll be able to put them onto this car. It's going to save a lot of money, save a lot of time. These parts on these cars are actually kind of getting hard to find on some items. Now keep in mind, we're in the United States. It can be very hard to find parts for this car. Over in Europe, I know these things are all over the road in Africa or Europe. And then the parts are just plentiful, but not here it's not. You could drive on a U.S. highway for five days straight across America, all around America, and you might see two of these, maybe even one. There is quite a few of them here in America, but to have one on the road at any given time is kind of a, kind of a crapshoot. There's not a lot of them on the road at any given time. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to fix this car, all my tools that I use are listed in the Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. You can purchase them there. And also, if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that now. You're going to want to keep up with what's going on with this car and many, many other projects in the shop. Many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.